What is up? Welcome back. I don't know if you can see behind me, but we have the truck absolutely loaded to the gills. We're gonna meet up with a familiar face that some of you may recognize. But for those of you that don't, we're headed to meet up with our boy, Mac Mulligan, young gun, lake trout guide extraordinaire. We are out in search of first ice. I got word that there is some safe fishable ice in his neck of the woods. We're gonna go fish for a species overnight, do a little bit of winter camping. Now, probably by winter camping, I mean, we're just gonna stay up all night and fish throughout the nighttime. But the species we're after, it's a nocturnal creature, not unlike myself. Anyways, that's what we're doing. First ice, camping out on the ice. But I'm gonna shut this camera off and focus on the road because paying attention is not my strong suit in the first place. So stick around, stay tuned. We'll check back in with you when we are with Mac. <laughs> I don't know what to say. I feel so rusty. Want me to do your intro or what? Make sure you say, this is Mac Diggity Dog Mulligan. I'm not going to say that. Okay. Go check out his channel. I'm not going to say that. Okay. Yo. What's going on, Mac? Welcome to the crib. The humble abode. The humble abode. What's going on, people? Welcome back. We're back out here again. You might remember that young deadly trap in the background from a previous video on this here channel. This is Mac Mulligan for anybody unfamiliar. We didn't have to kidnap him this time. In the last video that we filmed with Mac, we had to tie him up and bring him against his will. All right, let's go, get out. We are in the Southern region of Manitoba on a little undisclosed body of water, small little river. And as you've seen, it is the middle of the night. Why don't you tell them what we're uh, out here doing, Mac? Tonight, we are out on the night hunt, ice camping for hopefully a gigantic lake sturgeon freaks come out at night no better time than now let's go baby i'll give you a little pan around of the setup so yeah that's what we're dealing with we're uh, technically winter camping i doubt we'll sleep we're probably just going to stay up all night and fish for these sturgeon for those of you unaware sturgeon are primarily a nocturnal fish uh, especially in the winter months these fish usually come out and feed at nighttime so that's what we're out here doing so yeah we're gonna soak some baits we'll talk a little bit more in a minute but uh Let's go. Yeah, dude, it'll be way better just cooking heater dogs than trying to f around. Totally, I don't like f around one bit. Okay, so that's going. I'm going to... Yeah, you know, you just let me know whenever you're uh, ready to start fishing. <laughs> one day. We're at eight sturgeon by now, and like nine f walleye. Do you ever catch accidental walleyes? Yeah, usually a few masters a night. Shut up. That's a fish. Off the far end? Yeah. Put on this rod. Yeah. Oh yeah, he's right beside it. See, this fish is sliding down to the yeah. deep water now. Yeah. That's definitely a sturgeon. Bastard. It keeps coming to this side. Oh, it's on this right now, dude. Is it on it? Yeah, I'm gonna set the hook. Ready? Yeah. Nice hook, nice hook set. It's down there still. It's dumb. That was a really nice hook set. Oh, right? look at him. He just went down. Oh yeah. I didn't tag him, so oh, you can see him swimming for sure. Yeah, he's out. You want to like when you jig it, you want to like think of it not like jigging it, but more like feeling, ha feeling the bottom, the bottom. You're feeling yeah. for the fish. You're yeah. not like jigging for action. You're yeah, jigging exactly. for feel. So we're actually out here for two nights. Tonight is going to be just like a little kind of like a chill warm up. We're not going to get too heavy into the details of what we're doing. Kind of just like more entertainment than educational. And for tomorrow night, Max is going to take the reins on his channel and maybe kind of go through more of what we're doing, how we fish for these fish and kind of more of the technical stuff involved with what we're doing. You got right, Mac? Go into the details, get the pencils out and break it down. That's right. Check out Max's channel. I'll put a link in the description and on the screen. We've seen a couple fish roll through already, so hopefully uh, some good stuff's about to go down. That's a fish. Yeah. It's by you, no? Yeah, I'm trying to figure out what route it's about. Probably the far one. I would think. Uh, maybe not. No, it just bumped this one. Did yeah. it? Yeah, see that? Yeah. Just bumped it twice. Oh, there's one up shallow. Oh, yeah, yeah. Two. At the meteor hole. You think it's the middle? No, it'd be this one because it's f***ing close to the high scope hole. Yeah, I guess it would be, eh? That one just touched me, too. That looks like a bigger fish. Mm -hmm. It's got some length. You can see the skirt, you see how the, the fork tail on yeah. the far right side? Yeah. Yeah. You can see when it turned there, it poked right up. Like, this is what I mean, like they just take forever, they root around forever, and like you'll see they'll just go around, they'll bump all the lines. Or, we'll just hook it right away, but usually they just root around so slow. Oh yeah. Is it hitting? It's got a drug. 
Oh yeah, look at that boy. See that one, it didn't bite it, just brushed it. He's coming back shallow, it looks like. He went out there and I spun around. So he's coming back. Yeah, there you go. Let's see boy, is that a surgeon you think? Yeah, it's a small one though. Much fight to that guy. Oh, look at that. Target species acquired. He didn't even actually get in his mouth, he got inside. You're not supposed to tell him. Well, I'm just saying they're so clumsy. Look at that, that's a beautiful fish. Prehistoric mama. Like I was saying, they swim around with their fins out. So that fish just came in, clipped the line, and then I hooked him just under the chin there. Oh boy. <laughs> wrong way, bro. You're the king of smooth releases, huh? Oh yeah, you know it. Look at that. There, there she goes. Wrong. That's a nice shot. Good job, baby. On the board. Room for improvement. So we're here on very, very first ice. I think like things started freezing up maybe like less than a week ago for sure. One major tip that I can give you for early or first ice fishing, don't fall through. So as you can see, we're not dealing with very much ice here. So like 11 inches. Just kidding. It's like maybe five inches or so. So things are still a little dangerous. Just be careful. Mainly just don't pass through. Mainly don't pass through. Oh, there's a fish there on you. Yeah, you see it moving? That's already the bite. It just like barely moves. That's the deal with these sturgeons. They're huge fish, but the bite is just so subtle. It's touching it right now. You see that? Yeah. See, it's barely moving. Yeah, oh yeah. So one good thing with these like weightless, what do you call those? Like the, the gravity fed? A balance rod holder? Yeah, they're so nice for this oh, yeah, and also good it. for nice big walleyes and stuff. That's a big fish on yeah, the screen, dude. This rod. I might go across and touch your rod now. They're just like so big and so awkward when they spin around, they just bump everything. They're so clumsy. I think that might be the biggest mark we've seen. It bumped two lines so far, so it's definitely down there trying to feed. It's just a matter of finding something it can get in its mouth. I can't tell which rod that's on though. I don't want to lift it too high because I don't like these fish will suck only right off the bottom. Yeah, so just like on the fish that Matt caught, these fish have like a downward facing mouth that kind of like protrudes and they suck stuff up off the bottom. So almost all of the sturgeon that you're going to catch are going to be directly off bottom, kind of just sucking stuff out of the dirt. So it is important to be kind of right down, pounding sand, maybe even just like completely dead stick. And despite the fact that these fish are the biggest fish in Manitoba, they do not bite hard. So you have to be on your game. So there's a bunch of fish here. Oh, this one's getting touched. Yeah. Nice. Might be a little bigger. No, it came out pretty quick. That's like a super juvenile one. That's not where they're supposed to bite. He, uh, it looks like he bit that with his cornhole. I don't think that's right, but, um, <laughs> He's just a baby though. He's learning, man. You just stopped eating like that last year. Yeah, I'm still learning. Check it out though. What a neat looking fish though, eh? See how sharp they are? They got these crazy scoots in their back, especially when they're small. And they're literally just like knives. So sharp. Such an awesome fish. So Prehistoric. Crazy. These fish have been around pretty well unchanged for, I don't know how many years. More than a few. I'm trying to open his mouth, but he's a little stubborn. But they feel around on the bottom with these little barbels. That's their little feelers. Feelers kind of deal. Unique mouth, awkward fish, but they get big and they're fine. You'll figure it out. Figure it out. Yeah, there we go. There he goes. They look so cool swimming away, eh? Yeah, they're not very, they're not very flexible fish. They just swim like super like awkward kind of, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Like a normal fish like has that kick to it, but they just swim like so wide. So sick. Good job, buddy. You like that demo? I like that. Yeah, I thought for a second there you actually turned into a sturgeon. You'll notice it'll kind of come in waves, like they'll just be activity and they'll just die. Then there'll be another wave of activity. I don't think they school, but like, it's almost like they kind of move through the same kind of time. Like there's one rooting right now around this one, I think. You can see how its tail's flaring around. Like that's like literally them just on the bottom. Oh, that looks like a bigger fish there like coming towards like you. Doing weird stuff. All right, this one's getting touched. So I'm just feeling around. There you go. Nice job, dude. You've done this before, eh, Mac? A few times. A little bit bigger than the last one. Getting improvement. You can see how this one's got a little bit more flat scoots on its back just because it's a little bit of an older fish. A muddy mouth. But that's what Justin's talking about here, their mouth. It actually pops down, so they got a decent chunk of bone above their nose. Or above their lip, I guess, and then their lips actually pop down here, so they're a little bit of an awkward fish, but it's quite remarkable how it looks it when their mouth comes down. It's kind of strange. The really unique thing about them is their gills are actually black, like they're not like red, like your typical walleye and stuff. They're super dark in color. Why is that, Mac? I honestly don't know. I haven't really looked into it, but you're supposed to make something up. 
Man, why do they look so cool when they kick off? I love it. Love it. Good job, dude. You're, there's another one down there, you're spanking me arse. That's a lurker. That looks long. Hard to say how long, but it looks long. Is he They're still there? So clumsy. Yeah. Like that's what I mean. It's like it's frustrating because they're so clumsy. He's rooting out deeper. Oh yeah, he's pulling this right down. Look at him. He's vertical right now. Whoa, yeah, that's a good shot of it. Oh man, what the heck? What is happened? it doing? Is he it just got tangled in my line or something weird? Did it? Yeah. Now it's it dipping. Just, like, panicked. Like I felt like a big shake. He probably got like probably got line wrapped. Yeah. yeah. I just panicked. So we are doing some fine dining here. Winter camping specialty. Couple glizzies on the Mr. Buddy. As you can see, it has that little heater attachment. Such a beautiful little tool for getting food cooked while you're in the ice shack. Don't have to carry a bunch of different cooking apparatuses. So we're gonna chow those down. What uh, what flavor are those glizzies, Mac? Cheddar, baby. Cheddar glizzies. Cheddar or die. Have a look at that. That's some quality meat right there. You're not doing it unless you got the bold and spicy. Bold, bold and spicy. Or die. Deadly. We've got a great big oh, fish on the fun. screen. Max on. Smaller, That's the hot hole, boy. Oh. Look. Look at this one. He's missing a chunk of his fin. He ate all my bait, but he's missing a chunk of his fin there. <laughs> Come on. Maybe I'll release this one down to Justin's hole. <laughs> You can at least say a fish came through his hole tonight. Harsh. Here you go, bud. Oh, he doesn't even want to go down your hole. Here he goes. All right, dude. Okay, well, this is an unequal distribution of fish. That outside hole is the hot hole. So what it looks like is the fish are a little bit deeper. Um, the bank of the river is that way. And we have our hole set up going outwards into the deeper water. That's one nice thing about this big double wide Eskimo is you can kind of stretch out, especially on like a little river and cover quite a bit more water. The river we're on is not like super humongous. So the width of this shack is covering like a good, good section of the river. And uh, as you can see on the panoptics there, there's quite a drop off. Are you getting mad that I caught four now? Not even. I'm happy for you. I'm proud of you, you know? So this is the setup we're using. Little, the bait presentation. Little stand up jig with some meat on there, assorted meats. So we're doing an assortment of meat, crush up minnows, jam them on there every which way you can, and then catch giants. What rod is that that you're using? This is the Timber Big Ticket Medium. This thing's a giant fish catching machine. Excited to hopefully put it on a big sturgeon tonight. It's one of the rods that Mac designed for Timber Wilderness. These lineup of rods are literally like the ultimate lake trout rods. There's no room for improvement. They're just so fantastic. Got the big guides, slow taper towards the tip. So you got a perfect universal bend, big fish magnets. Clearly not only for lake trout, also very equipped for uh, any sort of gigantic fish species. All right, the glizzies are uh, looking good. Just gonna get these buns cut up for the boys here. Perfect, got a clean cut. One swipe of the blade. <laughs> Nice clean cut, perfect. Look at that. Ready to rock. Almost dropped that glizzy. Imagine, right down the hole. That's a good glizzy for you, man. Thanks, my man. Glizzy cheers. Double barrel. <laughs> you almost broke my glizzy. Fine. Oh, good. That's what the doctor ordered. Heater glizzies, that's what he ordered? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, there's a fish coming in. That one's rooting. Now it's coming to you, dude. Which one do you think it's on? Closest to the thing now. The shore? Its tail's up. Rooting. It's gonna try to eat it with its butt. It's gonna bump it eventually. It has to. If even just by accident, eh? Mm -hmm. They always do. Like if they're rooting, they're, they're gonna bump it. Yeah, they must just like smell it and be like, it's gotta be here somewhere. I know, what I think it? it is. It's just like, you know how you see like goldfish like in a tank just like spitting out the rocks? Yeah. Honestly? Like I think that that's how they do. They just go around and just spit. And then they finally find it, like, oh fuck yeah. And then they turn around and try to put their ass on it. And... Like sometimes, it, yeah. Oh shit, this road's getting bit. Let's see it, Mac, show me. Yeah, that's it. Small? Yeah, it's at the ice already. Sturgeon though. Yeah? It's fighting a little better than the other ones. I stunned him off the hooks, I think. 
Is that in his arm? Oh, maybe he thought it was deodorant. <laughs> <laughs> All right, there it is. Now, that's going to happen. I mean, that fish was hooked underneath the armpit there. It's dark out here. The sturgeon are using scent more than their eyesight. So he was probably sucking around on the bottom trying to get himself a little yeah. snack from, from the mud. And he uh, caught that hook in his armpit. But that's still a beautiful fish. That's a deadly looking sturgeon. See how their fins are? Yeah, that's amazing, man. Strong fish, though. Heck, yeah. This, that's a cool so shot, bony. dude. Like, it looks prehistoric, eh? Dinosaurs, man. Like, just look at the characteristics of the head. Just so bony. Unreal. And they're rough. Like, you can hear that. Mm -hmm. It's just a rough, coarse fish. That looks so cool every time, man. Every Good. time you get pumped. Good job, dude. Um, okay. When are you going to stop intercepting all the fish? Okay, so that makes the score like six to zero. I'm gonna make excuses for myself here. It definitely seems like the sturgeon are coming in from the deeper side of the shack, which is where Mac is set up. So he's intercepting these fish. I don't suck at fishing for sure. They're getting a little bigger, but they get so much bigger yet. So we're gonna get bigger ones. Let's go. I wonder if tomorrow should film stuff like... Yeah, that and like some winter camping stuff. Like, I don't know what to film about that. That's so f Winter camping? Yeah, like, what do you film? This is our f and things. This this is our beds. Maybe like tips for winter camping. Yeah. So as you can see, we have these little foam mats down. These help provide a little insulation from the ice and kind of just allow your feet to stay nice and warm. As you can see, Mac is in his uh, slippers. The beauty of winter camping is that you can just get so comfortable and really enjoy what you're doing and not be all bundled up. Like Ralphie from the Christmas story. That's right. Hey, There's a fish. This on your uh, outer one. Let's see it, Mac. We need this. Keep the spirits high. It's about 1.30 a.m. We haven't seen any fish in a little while or any fish that seem too active. We're waiting it out, though. We're, we're champing it. We're out here all night. So got a fish on the screen here. Rooting around Mac's jig. Root. Rooting. Show them how they root. Give, give them a visual of how they root. Something like that. Just Something like suck. an anteater. Just sucking. Just working through. You think that fish going to bite? I bet you it is. Oh, nothing. You should be shot. Oh yeah, just hit it. Did it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Ready? Nice. Good one? No idea. Come up pretty quick again. The lens is a little foggy, but that makes sturgeon number seven. Or eight maybe even. That's what we're talking about, how their mouth's weird like that. Look at that. There's that sucker mouth right there. Weird. Cool release? Not really. So At a boy. Getting after him. So it's about 1.30 now. That's the first fish we've seen in a while that showed any interest in our baits. We're still waiting on that big, big one. We're waiting it out all night. We're gonna be out here till the sun rises. Fish. It's got to be on this one. Again from the shallow, hey? Okay? Yeah. Oh, dude, it's root and look at its tail. Yeah, 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 yeah. It looks long, eh? I think it's still there. Definitely. You just bumped it. You bumped it? Yeah. Cool. He's lifting it, I think. There we go, boy. Finally, that's a decent one. Yes, sir. Look at that rod. Don't you love that rod, Mac? I'm glad you caught one on that thing. Me too. Ah, he's so sharp. He's so sharp. Finally, your boy's on the board. This nice little sturgeon who is currently stuck in a C-shaped pattern. <laughs> Good old C-shape. Check that out. Straighten out, little boy. A little mad, a little angry. A little cranky. Check that out. Meatball Sucked in the mouth. Sucked on that. Beautiful little sturgeon. First one of the night. Better late than never. Yeah, getting her done. Sick. That's a sick shot there after. Yeah? Yeah, look cool. 
Michael. It was nice because it was mostly fish and little Justin. <laughs> That's how it always looks best. There's no mouth. Get the guy back. Let's see if Justin gets a stick release like mine. So sturdy boy. Is this a submersible camera? Nope. Okay. I wouldn't submerge it if I were you. Sickly. Feel good, man. Well, it's about, what, like 2.30 now, man? I think that's like the ninth surgeon of the night. Still waiting on that huge big one, but uh, those are so cool, man. Well, we're Glizzy, you want a flame mignon? <laughs> Yuck, man. Heater grilled sucker. What time is that? Oh, look. Big swooshy. Oh, there's a fish close on one of yours. Not quite on me, but close. Oh, this one here just got touched. Nice job. It's super small, whatever it is. I don't know if it's a lake or a... A lake sturgeon? <laughs> I almost called it a lake trout. <laughs> Another one. one hey, it's a low, a low breaker. It's not a bad one. It's always good. That one's long. Long and lean. Sweet fish, dude. Tower. Tower house. <laughs> good thing they're so grippy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's got to swim away. That. that was a good one. Good, good release, dog. Asses, eh? Is that 10? Getting the double digits. I think, I think we are. Either 10 or 9. You awake, bro? Yeah. Well, Mac, the sun has officially risen, and I think that's a wrap on our day one of uh, the sturgeon hunt. Sturgeon slam. We did not get that super climactic, big, exciting ending that you always hope for in videos like this, but uh, we did catch a ton of fish and have just like a super good time. A little sleepover party on the ice. A little sleepover minus the sleeping. An over party. Yeah. <laughs> so thank you guys all so much for watching. I appreciate y'all, as you know. Stay tuned for the day two, which you'll find on Mac's channel. I will link it in the description where Mac is gonna run through all of the more fine and intricate details. So check that out. We'll see you soon. Peace.